Praise God. Back to our guardrails this evening. And uh, looking at the Word of God. And uh, I want us to uh, look at what God's Word says as we think about healing. I said last week we need to place those guardrails up in our life because we don't know uh, when it may be that uh, we will get sick. But one thing that is a given, uh, that our fallen, the fallen condition of our bodies often leads us to sickness. And uh, eventually we'll all die if the Lord should tarry. But I am grateful to know that tonight and that even though in this sinful condition that we live in, in our bodies being on part of this, this earth, and that we'll face sickness, and then that we can rely upon the presence and the promises of God, that He will heal. And I think it is important for us to put guardrails up in our life that God is the healer. Because we will face it. And to what degree, I don't know. Only God knows that, but we will face it. Certainly, like I said, if the Lord should tarry, some of us will face it to strong degrees. I shared several stories last week and gave you an opportunity to share. I want to share another story this evening in opening that I've shared some years ago. But Brother David Miller gave a testimony at downtown camp meeting when I was in Bible school that I'll never forget. And he shared how that he was a young married man and uh, just had a baby. And uh, his wife was diagnosed with cancer. In fact, her cancer was so bad that uh, it was imminent that she was going to die. And uh, he was at home with their uh, young child. And uh, can you imagine a father being married a short time, a young child, at home with that, knowing that his spouse was dying? A terrible thought. Uh, hard to conceive for a young man. And so... Uh, she had become so bad that uh, it was the, his mom who kind of helped him out with the child and helped him out with some commuting. And uh, she had called the prayer chain at church and she was looking uh, for any time to get a call even during the middle of the night. And he, she knew that that would be the end. And she feared that as well. She feared the situation for her son, uh, for, for the, the uh, situation she, that he was in. And so he said one night he was lying in bed. He knew his wife was very bad. Had just got some x-rays done. And the doctor looked at those x-rays. Gave the results of them to the family. And he was broken hearted for the results of the x-ray. He said he was laying there in bed that night. With his, uh, his, his mother had taken the child actually that, that evening. He was there alone. Uh, and uh, as he shared the story, he said he felt the wind blow in his room. And he got up and he looked at the window. And the windows were closed. He looked at the doors and the doors was closed. And then the Lord began to smote his heart uh, in the book of Job that God was in the wind. And he said he just began to pray. He said, before long the telephone rang. And he said that the doctor had called him and was on the other line and said, I need you to come to the hospital right now. Didn't give him any information. And so he was alarmed. He called his mom. His mom, once again, called everybody who knew that this was the end and uh, came to, uh, to the hospital with David and uh, Brother David. And uh, as they came there, the doctor said that he was laying in bed that night and just couldn't get the x-rays off of his mind. And he said he came back into the hospital that evening to look at the x-rays. And he said when he looked at the x-rays, everything was clear. The cancer was gone. Everything had, had been cleared up. She had had surgery. Her neck was cut from side to side over halfway uh, around her neck. And, uh, uh, and the surgery proved to be successful with the hand of God, uh, obviously uh, being part of that. And he said that uh, it was during that time that they went in and they talked to the nurses and they began to unhook IVs and things. And there were several IVs in her. And uh, he tells the story of how that when they began to do that, she literally began to run up and down the halls of the hospital rejoicing and praising the Lord. The nurses and doctors were running after her because her neck had been cut so badly they were concerned. Uh, but but uh, it has been now probably 30-some years later. I know there's some, maybe many of you know him, Brother Brian uh, Miller there in Ohio. Amen. Uh, she's still doing well. God is faithful. God is the healer. Amen. God is 
that you did. And uh, I wish that there could be more that I could tell you. But even, you know, I, I get to experience that with my job. Uh, some things I'm just not able to share. But I see God's healing hand at work. I'm telling you every week. And it increases my faith. Amen. God is faithful. And so I just want to remind us once again, amen, uh, that God is the healer. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. Amen. I'm not going to repeat uh, my notes except I want to jump back to where we just finished last week. And uh, in Genesis chapter number 20, we read about how Abraham prayed for his wife that God would, would open her womb. And uh, then uh, we read in, in Numbers chapter number 12 that Moses, he prays a prayer of healing, amen, for his family, amen. And, and we find that God hears and He answers prayer, amen. We looked at David. David said, uh, Lord my God, I, I called for you uh, for, for help. And he said, you, you, you heard me and you healed me, amen. And we look at Abraham, we look at Moses, we look at David, we see that all these men, were men of faith, if you would. Men that had a relationship with God. Amen. And because of their relationship with God and their faith in God, their prayers allowed them to see healing. Amen. He is the God that healeth thee. God is a healer tonight. Amen. I want you to drive those posts down deep. I want you to nail those guardrails on fast. Amen. Bolt them tight. Amen. That God is a healer tonight. Amen. And He heals of any disease. We'll look at that more this evening. Amen. God is the healer this evening. Someone read Matthew chapter 21, verse number 22. We're going to look at several scriptures, amen, beyond stories, which they're wonderful and I love to share them, amen. Those stories really mean nothing if we don't have the authority of God's Word to back it, amen. So let's look at what God's Word says. In Matthew 21, verse number 22. If someone would read that. Matthew 21, verse number 22. In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. He said, How many things? All things. All things. And what do we have to do? Ask them in prayer. Amen. Ask them in prayer. Believing, ye shall receive. Listen, I think sometimes that's the part we stagger at. There's several things here. First of all, whatever it is, we have to have faith that God can do it. And the next thing we need to do, instead of talking to everybody else about it, we need to get down on our knees and we need to pray about it. And have folks pray about it with us. It's okay to talk if you're going to pray. But, but we need to pray. Prayer is a, a thing that is talked greatly about, but very seldom done. Amen. We need to pray about it. And then when we pray about it, amen, we need to believe. Amen. Do you believe that God can do it tonight? I think sometimes some folks go through emotions and pray, but in their heart they always think, well, well there's no use. God's not going to heal. We have to believe. We have, we have to believe tonight. We have to believe. Do you believe tonight for that sickness that maybe seems so great? Do you believe that God's able to heal? I do. I do. And we're going to look at the Word of God even more tonight and see how we can build our faith in knowing that He is our healer. I think that there's something I'd like to answer tonight that, that I've been approached with oftentimes. And that is, oftentimes when we're sick, we are physically not feeling well, and that affects us emotionally. We can be emotional about it. And uh, I need to say this tonight, that it's okay with God if our prayers for healing are deeply emotional. I know I probably deal with it more on a level uh, working at the hospital and often seeing sick folks, that, that it can be a deeply emotional time for folks. But I want you to know it's okay that with emotion we talk to God. And they say, Brother Seville, why do you say that? Well, first of all, because God's Word gives us illustration of it. Let's turn to 2 Kings chapter number 20. 
2 Kings chapter number 20 and verse number 1 through 5. I think that we as Pentecostals, we probably are known for being emotional. You know, that's why we worship. It's an emotional experience as we worship. Praying can be an emotional experience. Amen. And we see from the Word of God that a man named Hezekiah was very emotional. If someone would read that 2 Kings chapter number 20, verse number 1 through 5, let's just all read it together as whatever individual chooses to read it aloud reads it. Would someone lead us tonight in that 2 Kings 20, 1 through 5? It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab. That's not right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> we'll give you the time to find it if you like. Somebody else has it. Someone have it? He meditated with Hezekiah and Hezekiah said unto death. And the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah left the sword. Then it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, and the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to say this tonight once again. I know that I've said it already. But serious illness can be emotionally devastating. It can. For you, for the individual that is going through that illness, uh, it can be emotional, emotionally devastating. And obviously tonight we're looking more so at the individual that's going through that. And the Bible says that Hezekiah was sick unto death. And as he was sick unto death, the word of the Lord was brought to him from the prophet Isaiah that told him that he was going to die. And the word of God tells us that in verse number one, the sickness was uh, sickness unto death. And uh, as he hears those words, the Bible says that he prayed unto the Lord. And jumping on down, the Bible says, and Hezekiah wept sorely, or in our terminology today, maybe we would say Hezekiah wept bitterly. And as he prayed to the Lord, uh, his prayers were emotional. And as he wept and he felt that emotion and he gave it to God, amen, the Bible says that the Lord heard him. I want to say something this evening, whether you're a man, and this is a man, and he is very sick, and it was emotional for him. And as he was sick, the Bible says that, that the sickness was unto death, and that, that he began to weep and he began to cry. Amen. If there's a place to, to pour our tears out, before the Lord's a good place. To be able to cry before the Lord. And he wept sorely, he wept bitterly before God. And, and the Bible says that he was so emotional in that, that the Lord spoken to the, the prophet Isaiah, and he said, I have heard thy prayer, and he said, I have seen thy tears. Amen. God hears our prayers, and God sees our tears. Amen. God is faithful. Sometimes in the middle of sickness, all we can do is cry out unto the Lord, God, I need you to touch me. And sometimes you just need to know it's okay. You are going to feel emotionally weak when you are physically weak. Amen. So pour it out before the Lord and know that those tears mean something. Amen. I love where, where David talks about that vow that, that, that God collects every tear. Amen. He sees every tear that we cry. Amen. And He hears every prayer that we pray. And it's okay with God if we are quite emotional when we begin to come and to touch with Him and present our needs before Him. It's okay. Sometimes that's the most empowering thing we can do for someone is say, it's okay just to have a little cry before the Lord. It's okay just to emotionally pray and shed your feelings before God. It is okay. 
The Word of God says it. And more than that, I think that it's interesting that it was effective before God. Instead of having a bad attitude and carrying it around, instead of getting angry at the doctor for giving the prognosis, instead of getting angry at God, instead of being grumpy and, and, and living life contrary to the way God wants us to, maybe we should direct our emotion in the right way and just cry before the Lord as we ask Him to heal us. Here was a man of God. The Bible says, who had done right before the Lord's eyes. The right of the Son of the Lord. And so he had every right to present his petition. And he did. And God heard. And God answered. Amen. I just want to share that tonight. But I think it's important that we share our feelings before the Lord. Amen. I want you to know tonight that Jesus, when we look at the Word of God, that He healed a broad range of different diseases. Let's turn together. Let's look at Matthew chapter number 4. Matthew chapter number 4. And verse number 23 and 24. Matthew 4. Verse 23 and 24. When someone has it, go ahead and read it. there, but in other places it's, it's not specific. All manner of diseases, all. And then he be, the Word of God begins to be specific in some things. Amen. I, I need to remind us again tonight that for those who serve the Lord, Christians, amen, that God is a God that heals of all manner of diseases and all manner of sicknesses. Amen. That should let our faith rise tonight. He heals of all manner of diseases. He heals of all manner of sicknesses. It's a broad range. Amen. Some may not even have a specific diagnosis. Some may be new on the scene. But I want you to know that God heals of all diseases and all sicknesses. That is what His Word says. Amen. From a little bellyache to a runny nose to a terrible diagnosis. Amen. God is the healer tonight. Amen. And He's still in the healing business. Every manner of diseases. And these are what are included in them. As we come down in verse number 24. Amen. Diverse diseases. What is that? Diverse it means various. Different types of diseases. Uh, and he goes on down to say, uh, let me find my place there. Amen. Of torments. Those that bring suffering and pain. Torments is out of pain, isn't it? Sometimes with some diseases and sicknesses, we have terrible pain. Amen. He's able to heal any pain that we may go through. The Bible says, and those uh, which were possessed with devils. Amen. Not every sickness means someone is demon possessed. It's simply saying that here. Amen. He's able to, to deliver from, from diseases. I think it's interesting to know that when we look at Job, amen, where did his sickness come from? The devil. The enemy. God's able to deliver from the tactics of the enemy. The enemy fights against us from, for us living the life that God wants us to live. Victorious and being a, a partaker of His wonderful glorious inheritance that He's given to us. Amen. God's able to break the things that the devil puts upon us. And then the Bible says, and those which were lunatic. Uh, it could possibly be this, those who had seizures. We know that even in our day and age, there are those that have seizures. And then the Bible says, and those that had the palsy. And uh, in our day and age, we would maybe call it this, those that were paralyzed, God healed. And He healed them, the Word of God says. Amen. I want you to know something this evening. Don't ever hesitate to bring any manner of sickness before God. Because He is the healer. 
Amen. Put the guardrails up in the middle of your life that He is the healer over any sickness. God is able to bring wholeness. God is able to bring completeness. Amen. We need to pound that. Amen. Deep in the ground. Amen. Deep as our guardrails so that we know God is the healer. Amen. I know Sister Holly, Sister Tiffany, part of what I do, uh, you know, we, we walk, we work around those that are sick. And bottom line is this, and, and I'm thankful for modern medicine, and I'm thankful for good doctors, and there are good doctors. They've studied hard, they've worked hard, but they're not the healer. They can only be a tool. God is the healer. Amen. And I trust Him for healing the sick man. He is he's not a specialist in one area. He's a specialist in all areas. Taking care of all sicknesses and disease. <coughs> in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 8, not only do we find that He healed all manner of diseases, Jesus, but in the book of Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 16, I find that this is interesting this evening as we look at healing. Amen. That Jesus, His healing power had been prophesied about. Now I want to say this, and I want to get ahead of myself, but it wasn't prophesied just from the time that He walked uh, on, on earth. But the work that He would do on the cross, amen, would be effective for us today. So I want to read Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 16 and 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto Him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he would all that were sick. Go ahead to the next verse, brother. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Amen. It was prophetic. We talked some about this last week in Isaiah chapter number 53. But here we find Matthew, and he's writing, and he says in the conclusion of verse number 16, and that he healed all that were sick. And that it might be fulfilled that which was prophesied by Isaiah, that he took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. Once again tonight, amen. That symbol up on the wall there is a symbol that I appreciate. Amen. I don't worship that symbol, but it does mean something to me. It reminds me of the work of Calvary. Amen. I've never been there physically. Amen. I've never been to the hill of Golgotha. Amen. Physically. But I've been there many times spiritually. When I got saved, I was there spiritually. There's been many times I brought myself to the foot of the cross. Amen. But I also want to say, not only for salvation, not only for renewal and forgiveness, but also for healing. Amen. The cross represents our healing. Amen. The Word of God once again here says that He took our infirmity and He bare our sicknesses. That is the work of the cross. Amen. Let's look to the cross tonight. The work of the cross. The finished work of the cross where we are healed. Amen. And that is a place where, where healing took place and He already purchased our, our healing for us. Amen. And jumping down in verse number 36. No, I've got the wrong chapter there. I wrote something down wrong. Matthew 14. Oh, I got something. Let me, let me give him myself. Amen. He bare infirmities. He bore our diseases. He healed all that, all that were sick. And that was a fulfillment of prophecy. I want to say that we should be encouraged tonight to reach out to the Lord. I'm using the name Jesus tonight because I know there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. But we should be encouraged to reach out to Jesus for our healing. Amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter number 14 tonight. Matthew 14, verse number 35 through 36. I want to read that. Matthew 14, verse number 35 and 36. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And they sought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Amen. I know that 
oftentimes we think about touching his garment, we think of the woman with the issue of blood. That's not what we're dealing here with. We're dealing with uh, the Word of God talking about those that have sought Jesus that they might only touch him. And the Bible says that if they touch the hem of his garment, that as many that touched, amen, were made perfectly whole. I think that that's interesting this evening when we're looking at healing that we should encourage ourselves to reach out and touch the Lord. Amen. We sing that old chorus and uh, it has more meaning to it than probably what we, we even realize. Reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. And then you'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. Amen. I think that we need as believers to touch the Lord. Amen. To really reach out and touch God. Amen. It wasn't just the woman with the issue of blood that touched the hem of his robe. Amen. And found completeness. But there were many who were sick who reached out and they touched the Lord. Now I also find sometimes in my experience that some folks, they'll say, "My, I'm, I'm sick and I, I feel so far away from God. I feel like when I pray that the heavens are brass. I don't feel God the way that I'd like to feel God. You know, I want to say this this evening, and I'm telling you by, by experience as I've talked to folks, I often hear them say that. I think the thing that we need to remind ourselves is that when we are feeling well, that the most important thing that we can do is press into the presence of the Lord and reach out and touch Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we may not feel like we'll get super close to Him, but if we can touch the hem of His garment, amen. What am I saying by that? If we we can press as close as we possibly can, even though we're not feeling well. Sometimes we may say, well, the Lord feels far away. Amen in my, my experience right now. But I encourage you to reach out, to press in, to touch Him. Amen. There's something about touching the Lord this evening that brings wholeness and healing. Amen. It is our part to reach out and touch the Lord. And then it's the Lord's part, amen, to heal us as we touch Him. Amen. It's just our responsibility to touch Him. Really, that's the simple part, isn't it? Amen. It's then His responsibility to touch us. And He is willing and He is able to heal tonight. Amen. So in the middle of sickness, Amen, I know you feel fatigued. I know you feel weary. Sometimes when we don't see an answer right away, it can be discouraging. Amen. But I would encourage you once again, continue to reach out and touch the Lord. That's what I love about God's house. Amen. I have recently, the past few months, I have just every service been basking in the presence of God. Amen. As we come together as, as a body of believers, knowing that we bring the Lord with us. And God honors us when we are gathered together in His name. Amen. And as you begin to share the good things of God. Amen. It brings God close and we can reach out and touch Him. Sometimes I just want to bask there. I want to stay there. I want to be frozen in time. I know that that's not a possibility, but I'll tell you, I stay as long as I can oftentimes. Sometimes, really for me as a pastor, sometimes I don't want to be afraid of quietness or when the presence of the Lord is moving because that gives you an opportunity to be able to touch God as He's passing by. Amen. Reaching out and touching the Lord. Let's turn to Mark. Mark chapter number 1. But I believe that oftentimes I, I find that it's easy to pray the leper's prayer. But let's pray Jesus' prayer as we look at this. Mark chapter number 1, verse number 40. And verse number 41, if someone would read that, please. it shows us the attitude that we should have in prayer. Here we find that our, 
our doctrinal basis of God's healing shouldn't be upon what, what the leper says. Because he says, God, if you're, if you're willing, if, if you would, would you, would you make me whole? Would you cleanse me? And the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. And He put forth His hand and He touched Him. Whether we touch the Lord or the Lord touches us, the most important thing is God will touch us. Amen. Whether it's by our faith touching Him or whether He touches us. And the Bible says that He said unto him, I will be thou clean. I think that we need to have something firmly fixed in our soul tonight. That God is willing to heal. I think that needs to be established in our heart and our life. That God is willing to heal. God, if you would be willing, why wouldn't God be willing? Is He the healer? Does He stand upon, uh, give us the authority of His Word to stand upon? I know some are probably thinking, well, what about Paul? We'll get there later. But I want to tell you that we must believe that God is willing tonight. It would be futile for us to pray if we did not believe that God was willing to heal us. God is willing. Because you know what? Because He is moved with compassion. And I believe God does want to show us who He is. Amen. Through healing. And I do the thing that God wants to reward our faith. Amen. By those who come in faith to Him tonight. God is willing. I want to touch on one more thing this evening. And I know that I'm moving quickly. But there are several things that I want to look at as we're looking at healing. And we'll continue next week. But I, I also wants you to believe the Lord for divine healing. Have faith in His power that He is willing to heal you. You can turn there, but in, uh, you probably know the story and I'll relate it to you. But in the book of Matthew, chapter number 9, the Bible tells us about that woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible says... That, that woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years came behind him and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. For she had said within herself, If I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Jesus turned about and when he saw her, the Bible said that he spoke to her and he said, Your faith hath made you whole. Now, this evening there's, there's a... this terminology that, that I really don't like, to be honest. I just spoke to someone this week, and uh, when we were speaking, they thought they were on the same page as me, but I don't think they were on the same page as me. We were talking about healing and how the Lord heals and God touches. They said, you got to have faith. We don't need to have faith in faith. you got to keep the faith. Faith alone will do nothing for us. Our faith needs to be placed in Jesus Christ. That is where faith needs to be placed. Some people, I, I, I've heard it said before, you know, everybody needs to have faith and faith will really help people in tough times and faith will help people when they're sick. Faith itself won't do anything. You can say you can have faith and you can have positive thinking. The power of positive thinking, although I think that we as Christians should be positive thinking people, amen, but the power of positive thinking won't do anything for you. What will do something for you is when you have faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe that sometimes we need to just walk by faith. Amen. We need to thank God for the healing. Last week I was talking to someone in my workplace and they said something that was good to me. They said the Lord had been dealing with them as they had petitioned the Lord for a need. They said the Lord had been dealing with them instead of always petitioning and saying, God, will you do this and will you do that? They said God has challenged me through His Word and through His Spirit that I would begin to say, thank you, Lord, for doing this and doing that. Amen. Sometimes I think that we just by faith need to walk on and believe that God has done it. Sometimes we just need to do that. 
That is what real faith does. It says, I'm going to step out in faith. My wife shared an amazing story with me uh, today. I believe that she works with uh, as a son. Good, good fellow. I've known him since he was a little guy. And uh, he, he was on a missions trip. And uh, as he was on a missions trip, he was jogging. And, uh, uh, and, and, and a car came up. Where were they? In Jamaica. And a car came up behind them. And at gunpoint told them to give them their wallets and all their money. All right? And, uh, of course, they were scared. He says, yeah, young fell in his 20s. And, and uh, uh, they did, and then they told them to take off and start running. And as they did, they were able to run back to freedom. You know, faith said, I'm going to go and trust God. Turn my back and trust God. Sometimes we just need to run by faith. Not knowing what's going to happen. But just trust God. We just need to trust God. Faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you tonight, sometimes we just need to pour our emotions out before Him. And we need to know that He heals all manner of diseases. And sometimes, we just need to touch Him. Reach out and touch Him. You may say, I don't feel it, Brother Sibyl. Faith says, you've got to reach out. I love when I have faith that I can feel. And sometimes I'll pray that for individuals. God, give them faith that they can feel. But sometimes we walk by faith. And it's faith is the things that we cannot see. But we have to believe. Amen. That God is faithful. If you have areas in your life that you've been praying for, I challenge you tonight, not only press in and touch the Lord, but as you do that, start thanking God for the healing and walk in faith that God's done it. Because God is faithful. I can't tell you. I wish I could share stories, but I can't because of, of, of walls. But I've seen so many people that was given over to death that are whole tonight. God is the healer. I said God is the healer. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. I think sometimes folks say, well, why don't we see healing the way that we used to? You know, it's so easy in our day and age to run to a doctor or run to some medicine. And I think we first need to give a little try. I think we need to trust God. I think we need to be wise. But I think we need to trust God. And sometimes, God does. I mean, Jesus chose a, a physician, didn't He? To be very uh, uh, much a part of, of, of even the Word of God that we read. And God can take that skill training and He can do the healing. But no man can heal. No man. It's God. And we have to place our faith in God. This evening, I'm trying to be mindful to keep things at a particular time. Do you have something you'd like to share tonight as you think about healing? Well, when you're saying about um, emotion and prayer, well, I'd rather have somebody that's emotional pray over me than just somebody who's callous because from what I've seen, it's emotion that serves the hand of God. Because he's touched by the feelings of the, not only our infirmities, but he's moved by our emotions. He feels what God moves with. And like I said, if it comes to life, that's just one thing I notice. And I think, I think it's okay for people to be emotional before God. And we need to let them know that. And I think you're right, though, Justin. I would rather have someone who's emotional praying for me. That, that that from the depth of their soul. Not just prayer. You know, I'm not... We, we as believers, when we look at the Word, we're not into these written prayers that we pray. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to visit with some folks that go to different types of denominations and they say, you're different. You're different. You really feel that, don't you? Well, if I, if I didn't feel it, I really shouldn't even be a part of it. 
And I have to remind myself that no matter how bad the sickness, that God is able. God is able. And I'm glad that I've been able to see that in my life. Definitely am, am glad for that. I've seen God do, do works here already and uh, in our, our own church. I want to see more happen. I think, once again, as I went to church on Tuesday night, or Wednesday night, and Brother Burgess preached, that was phenomenal. Because I think oftentimes the devil holds us back from what God has for us. And he knows if he can affect us physically, it affects a vast multitude of things. It affects our prayer, our <coughs> taking God as word, our going to church, our receiving what God has for us. So he works hard at that. He's been doing that since the beginning of time. He did that for Job. Remember, although Genesis is the first book that we read in the Bible, chronologically written, Job was the first book. I think it's interesting that we see the enemy's attack from the very beginning. And particularly on health. I think God wants us to be made whole. I think it is also our responsibility to take care of our temple while I'm saying that. You know, um, we need to take care of our temple so that God can keep us healthy. Some of it is our choices. We make bad choices. And God's merciful even in that. And but, but we can trust God for our healing. Anybody else tonight? As you were sharing, I was thinking about James 5, verse 16, which says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual firm prayer of a righteous man are better than much. And I go back down. Um, on Valentine's Day, it was two weeks after I miscarried, and that's when I started the hand page. And it took me by surprise because I thought it was pretty much over. And, um, you know, I just started to be so happy to pray this at work, and um, the girls. They didn't really know what was going on. I didn't tell them very much. But I knew that without the help of God, things could get pretty desperate for me. And this verse kept coming to me, the effectual firm of prayer of righteous man, but it was not. And then the account of the woman was the issue of bread. Now she pressed through the crowd to touch the Lord. And then she felt in her body that he had healed her. And I think it was about three hours um, before I felt his healing touch. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much the end of it. And I thought so many times, you know, if I can just stay back and thought, well, you know, I don't know how to do. I'm just going to give up. Praise the Lord. The kids can't do anything for me. And hadn't cried out to the Lord. I might not be here tonight. But he told me through. And I'm just so thankful that his word works. That he Amen. is the great physician. And like you said, there's nothing he can't do. And I appreciate that so much. Amen. And I appreciate the Lord lets us know very, very, very frankly all manner of diseases, all manner of infirmities. God's able to heal. Amen. God is able to heal. Praise God. God's faithful. Someone else tonight. I'm going to see you let's stand on God's word. I know that in our body, we can stand the same. Let's stand upon God's Word knowing that He is the healer. I know that in our body, here at American Revival, there are several that are sick. I still pray for you. I still believe. I'm not giving up. Amen. God has given me no reason to doubt. I haven't shared this. I think I shared it with Brother Dennis and Sister Sandy. My sister had been, has been sick for several years, and um, you know it's it's heart wrenching. It's you know I see her, I see you know I see her on her good days, and she looked rough on her good days. And I never will forget um, last year, Sister Carter said that she was at Allentown camp meeting, and <clears throat> she said that. You know, there was just hundreds of people there. She said that she heard someone just crying out, God, heal me, God, heal me. And she said she knew that it was my sister, and she went over and she started praying for her. She said she was seeking the Lord to heal her. And, uh, you know, they had went off, felt the Lord calling them off the evangelistic field because of her sickness, and even in pastoring, she missed a lot of things because of sickness. And, uh, 
she shared that uh, this year at the Minister's Conference there in uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, uh, she felt like the Lord touched her. And uh, she hasn't been as sick. She's had some episodes. But overall, the Lord has really done a divine work. That was years that she was praying for God to touch. I know it's not completely there, but God's going to do a complete work. And we're trusting Him. I say it to say this, is that we can never get weary. Listen, brothers and sisters, we don't get weary praying for you. Don't you get weary? Amen. Don't you ever think God gets weary? He doesn't. God loves our faithfulness. And it was the woman, the widow woman, who went to the judge who was faithful, but the judge finally heard her. You may be one prayer away from your healing. Don't stop praying. You may be one touch away from touching the Lord for Him to touch you and to do a divine work. Don't stop reaching out and touching Him. God is faithful. God is faithful. Some things we may never know on this earth, but God will certainly reveal it. But until then, I'll continue to take God at His word. He is the healer. Over and over and over again. From Old Testament to New Testament, He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healed me. I wonder this evening, before we even dismiss to go home, where, where we are, each one of us. Amen. Let's shut ourselves in with the Lord. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Whether it's you tonight that needs a healing or someone that's dear to your heart, Amen. I wonder if you'll take them to the great physician. Amen. You'll reach out and touch his garment. Amen. He is the healer tonight. The God that healeth thee all manner of diseases. Amen. Let's each shut ourselves in with the Lord tonight. Lift up your hand. Lift up your heart. Amen. But reach out and touch Him. <coughs>